I've been making desk setups here on YouTube for over six years now and it's definitely one of my favorite things to do. And I finally settled on a setup which allows me to run my Mac, my iPad and my Windows PC all through the single monitor I want to run it through. And in this video, I'm going to show you how all of that works, all of the productive items and things I have on my desk. And at the end, I'm also going to share with you my best advice on how to find your own style and to make your own desk setup better. So if that sounds good, hit the subscribe button and we'll get right into it. Okay, let's start with the desk build itself. And this desktop is from Ikea. Everybody say it with me. This is the Carby kitchen countertop and it's 186 centimeters long and 60 wide. And it's been really fantastic. It's quite a solid wood, so there's no bowing in the middle or anything like that. My only feedback on it is 60 centimeters for a width isn't actually that thick. It's actually quite slim. So once you've got things like a monitor on there and a keyboard and a desk shelf or something like that, you don't have a lot of space left. Holding that up is a pair of FlexiSpot white standing legs. I wanted to go for a standing desk setup this time as that's something I've never had at home. And it's been really good to have in the studio space. You get four settings on there as well, so you can set this up for different heights if you need to. And overall, it's been a really nice addition. Something I haven't shared online is I've had a pretty bad leg injury lately, which has made sitting down at my desk a bit impossible. So I used to say that I never ever use my standing desk, but that's completely changed recently. I'm only ever standing at my desk. And I'm finally really happy that I made the investment because it means my life has just become so much easier now that it does. Sitting on top of the desk is the Grove Made desk shelf and I'm a huge advocate for these. I really like them and I think they add a wonderful sense of cohesion and kind of completion to your desk. Not only are they a great place to hold up your monitor, but also they've got loads of little shelves and stuff so you can store all sorts of things in there too, which just makes organizing your desk and keeping things neat and tidy really, really easy. As for computers that are sitting on the desk, we have to start with my M1 Max Mac Studio, which has just been the perfect computer for me. It's my main workhorse. And the version I have here is the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And honestly, I don't think I could have asked for much more when Apple put this out. I've had it for two years now. I basically pre-ordered it the second it came out for video editing, for photo editing, for design work, and even for some graphics based stuff. It's been such a powerful workhorse and it's honestly showing no signs of slowing down. Secondly, and I am going to class this as a computer, is my M4 iPad Pro. I store this on the little shelf, but when I bust it out, I can plug it into the monitor and it becomes its own computer and desktop experience. I don't think it's kind of reached the limit yet of what it can do so I'm really hoping that will show its face at some point but that's one I keep on my desk too. Other than my Mac Studio which is my main computer I do have my custom built PC which I built a couple years ago and I was hoping would be my main kind of computer then but I was thinking about getting this upgraded and getting it working because I've managed to get it to work with my studio display which took quite a long time and it's actually a really really nice system so that's something I'd like to do this year too. If you want to see a video on like a new build or something like that within this case then let me know because I think it'd be fun to make. When it comes to software, I use a real big variation of apps to get everything done, but there's only one app I really use to make sure I stay on track and to keep myself organized. And I'm really happy to tell you that they're today's sponsor, Notion. I've been a Notion user for over six years now, and I honestly can't imagine how I would run this channel without it. Notion is like my entire brain on one program. It's where I keep track of all of my video ideas, all of my short form ideas, all of my long-term goals, all of my sponsors, all of my newsletter drafts. It's basically got everything in there. This is my bite review homepage, which has got everything I need. And the main one I use here is my video roadmap. This is where all of the videos lie. And for an example, we can talk about my desk setup tool because that's a video we're in. So if we click into there, that will have all of the bullet points I've got laid out for this video. And that builds up what exactly I want to do. So when I shoot my A-roll, I can just check off all of these as I go. And then finally, when the video is done, I can move that over to the published area to make sure I know it's complete and sorted. That's super brief of how I use it for this channel. And there is loads of other ways of using it too. And you don't have to be a creator like me. You can be a student or a bigger business or just someone who wants to get their life a little bit more organized. There's even Notion AI built into this right now, which can help summarize things or come up with new ideas or just help you do anything else within the app. If you can think it, you can make it with Notion. I did. And if you want to check it out for free, check out the link in the description below. All right, let's talk about the Apple Studio display because I have been through the ringer with this monitor. I bought one and then I returned it 
and then I bought another one for the studio, which I really liked. Then I replaced my monitor at home with a studio display as well. So I now own two after returning one, which is just a big thing. Anyway, the long and short of the studio display is it's a really incredible display. Yes, it's very expensive for what it is, but it's also the brightest monitor I've ever used. And I work in quite bright rooms. We've got a massive window over there. And having that brightness has been absolutely essential for working where I do. The speakers that are built into it are also absolutely incredible I don't need speakers anymore because I can just rely on what the monitors pushing out you're also getting a webcam and microphone array built in which is perfect for video calls the camera doesn't look amazing but it does the job and also the kind of build quality and aesthetic style of this thing is something you're also paying for but I really really love it and also the fact that it's 5k just means the Mac scales to it perfectly now I never had a huge issue of working on a Mac with a 4k display it looks fine but as soon as you jump up to 5K, it's like, oh yeah, wow, this is how it's supposed to look. Also, it's crazy color accurate, which is really useful for doing this sort of work where I'm recording videos or designing something. It's also perfect for plugging an iPad into if you want that external monitor experience as well. You get all of the brightness controls and volume and everything works like the webcam and mic array. It really is perfect for the Apple ecosystem. It's just not so much when you step out of it. And look, I did try moving away. I tried a Samsung OLED ultra wide gaming monitor at like 144 hertz and while it was cool it just wasn't right for me you could see pixels straight away and for what i do you know design and video work it's just not the right thing even though having 144 hertz was nice it's far from perfect though i actually think at this price it shouldn't really be 60 hertz it should be like 120 like the macbook pros but the bigger one for me and this is the one that will put a lot of people off is there's only one input and that input is usb-c which if you're working from any Mac computer is fine. You plug it in, you're good to go and everything works how you'd expect it to. But as soon as you wanna plug in like a Switch or a gaming device or a Windows PC, things get really complicated really quickly. Now I have actually managed to get my Windows PC plugged into here through one cable and that's working well. I've even got it up to 5K resolution, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, the speakers don't work, the webcam doesn't work, and the microphones don't work. It basically just turns back into a dumb monitor. It also means switching between those three setups is tricky. To go between the Mac and the iPad is pretty simple. I just unplug the Mac from the studio display and plug the same wire into my iPad, and then I'm good to go. But for the PC, I have to unplug that wire and then plug in the separate wire to get that running. Luckily, the keyboard and mouse have three different Bluetooth profiles, so I can jump between each computer easily. But all of these reasons is what makes it very difficult to recommend for someone who's not in the Apple or Mac ecosystem. Okay, let's talk about all the stuff that's on the desk. And we've got to start with the keyboard. This is the Keychron Q2 Max. And look, I've got so many keyboards at this point, it's become its own problem. But this one lately has been my favorite by a really long shot. It's got linear keys, which I really like the sound of. They're a bit more silent than the more tactile ones I've been using lately. But my favorite thing about this, despite it looking really nice, is the fact that it has this knob on the top right. This acts as default for volume, but you can pretty much program it to do anything. And I've been using that volume knob so much that when I go to other keyboards, I actually reach to grab it, even though it's not there, which just goes to show how quickly it's already embedded itself into my kind of workflow and usage. For the mouse, I am using the Logitech MX Master. This is the silent version. I picked this up when I moved into the studio and it's probably the best mouse you can get for Apple right now. I really like the scroll wheel on the sides. So I can scrub timelines in Final Cut Pro really quickly just by turning that and having all the other little macros and buttons on there has just made it very very good. Both of those are sitting on this nice felt desk mat from Grovemade and this is a really small one. As I mentioned earlier the desk isn't too wide so I have to go for a small one but I actually really like the look of this. To the right of that I've got our very own in-house produced mug and coaster. Uh, this is the Byte Review Edition one so if you want to grab one I will leave a link to it below. These look really wonderful together. And over to the left, I have this really nice lamp from Kushu. This is actually kind of like a filament lamp. It's just one long LED, but you can shake it and it will kind of collapse and turn into its own new light, depending on kind of how you shake it. And it just gives this nice kind of faint glow to the setup, which I really like too. As for things on the shelf, I usually have one or two things on here. First up is my iPhone holder. This is from Grovemade, or if I need to, I'll swap that out for my iPad holder. This is from Kushu, it's magnetic, so the iPad just snaps right on, but it's kind of party trick is, 
It also charges the iPad too, which gives it this nice kind of MagSafe feeling, which I really wish Apple would implement on the iPads. And this allows me to use my iPad with my Mac as a universal control device. So I can use the same keyboard and mouse, go over to the iPad, do something on there and then come back to the Mac. And for posting things on Instagram or browsing TikTok or using kind of any list based stuff, it's really, really useful. Next that stand is this little pen holder from Ugmunk, which is a really beautiful small wooden stand which just holds one pen. Within the shelf itself though, I have a bunch of kind of smaller items which are really useful for me to grab. On the left hand side, I've got a couple books which I refer to quite a lot for design help or for some productivity help. Under that, I have a Orbit Key Nest which holds a bunch of really small items. In the middle of the shelf, I've got both of my iPads. So that's the iPad mini and the iPad Pro with M4. On the right hand side, I've got a few valet trays from Ugmunk. In the smaller one, I've got my AirPods Pro and my small iPhone tripod. And in the larger ones, I've got my YouTube backup drive, which holds all of these videos and a webcam and kind of a knife and some other smaller things. Under that as well is a larger kind of pencil mount, which holds my Apple pencils and some other pens, which is really nice. And I also keep a bunch of other smaller stuff, which is kind of just there for design purposes. Okay, when it comes to cable management, it's something I haven't really talked loads about because my setup is really simple, but I'd really recommend you all do it because it's a really cheap way of making your desk setup look really, really nice. Mine is a combination of two things. First up is this power strip, which gives me four outlets, a USB-C outlet on this side and a bunch of USB-A's as well and that holds all the power for the Mac and the screen and everything up top. And the rest is just this strip of white trunking from Amazon, which was super cheap. And this holds all of the wires within it. And it also has little holes on the outside so you can poke wires through it. So you can put in a wire wherever you need it to. And this just goes underneath the desk. It's all self-adhesive, so you don't need to get anything else and it just stays up there really neatly. The other thing as well is because my desk is a standing one, you do need a bit of a slack wire. So I try and pick a cable which has got a nice kind of braid to it or something like that so it doesn't look messy because this is the only wire you can't get rid of. And I think if you have a nice one, it actually adds to the overall look. So that's basically how I'm cable managing my entire setup. So that's how I've got my desk set up at the moment, but it is within a wider space now. This desk is no longer at home, it's in my creative studio. And I really like the idea of this desk being framed by everything else that I need. So straight up, I've still got my camera shelf, which holds all of my lenses and my cameras so I can grab them really quickly. And on the higher shelf, is a bunch of other smaller things. I've got Game Boy up there. I've got this like Lego ramen shop. And there's some plants up there as well, which just kind of help frame the entire setup. And I really like the way that everything just kind of folds together. Oh, and if you like the prints and stuff on the wall, I will do my absolute best to name all the artists I can and put links to them below so you can go and support them. One thing I did really want to highlight is these Pokemon decks. And these were from Santa Cruz and they were Pokemon blind bag decks. So you had no idea which Pokemon you were getting with them. And I got Squirtle, which I was really happy about. So we decided we'd get Bulbasaur and Charmander off eBay. We managed to get Bulbasaur, but um, Charmander was just crazy expensive and it still is. And one other thing I wanted to show you, which is a bit of a deep cut, is this. This is a tape player and we recorded our lo-fi station onto it, Kuroku Radio. And it sounds something like this. And the plan was to make some really nice tape designs and sell it on the Kuroku store so you could all enjoy it in a tape player kind of fashion if you liked. Um, but we, we kind of didn't do it. Uh, there's not a massive reason as to why, but um, yeah, it just never really happened. Um, so what we'll do is probably pop that back up there and uh, that's likely where it will stay. One of the bigger questions I always get though whenever I post about this on Instagram or talk about it in videos is people ask, how did you find your style? And my best advice straight off the bat is to start saving stuff you like. So if you're on Instagram or Pinterest or TikTok or anything like that, make a new folder within those apps and every time you see something nice or something you really like or even just a style or a picture you like, put it in that save folder. You'll slowly start building up this mood board and you'll also start slowly kind of learning these sorts of things even without thinking about it. It's kind of like an osmosis effect and the more you'll just understand what works. My second tip, and it's something I've said before, is to make sure you put a bit of something you really love into every setup. So whether you're a huge fan of a certain show or if you've got like a little figure that you'd like to show off, then by all means put it into the setup 
but just don't overdo it. And thirdly, don't be worried when your first few attempts don't pay off kind of how you'd expect them to. When I look back at my older setups, I sometimes like wince a little bit and cringe because I know I wouldn't do that now, but you have to go through that process to know what works. And finally, your own taste is a feeling and it doesn't have to commit to what everybody else does. There's loads of clean and minimal and super stylized desk setups out there, which I really like, but I wouldn't personally do them. And that's fine. It's fine to like someone else's style while not doing it yourself. And as soon as you kind of get all those things together, you'll start developing your own kind of personal look and brand. So I hope you find that somewhat helpful. So there's my desk setup for 2024. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do pop a like. And if you think there's anything I should check out which is kind of like aesthetically pleasing on a desk, like an accessory or something like that, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.